And welcome back everyone. This is a game number three in this best of five series that is tied up by the way, so we're at least going to go to a game number four between Simon Fraser University and University of British Columbia. My name is Joshua Feck as Quest and I'm here with Octavian and I have no idea who's gonna win the series now, Octavian. I still favor UBC, if only because of the mid game of game two. Simon Fraser looked lost after they got that early lead. They didn't seem to know what to do with it. And that is a fatal mistake. They almost gave that game up. They were down two inhibitors and a Nexus turret, and they won miraculous team fight after miraculous team fight off the back of Nomadic and Gemnus playing their minds out. I mean, we, in the, in the course of that game, we give a lot of praise to Demnus and praise where it was due for sure. The guy played a brilliant, brilliant Syndra, but Nomadic as well was deathless in that match and had really good consistent damage in the Ezreal. But Frozen Knight's going back to the graves. Uh, it sort of worked in game two. Admittedly, he actually didn't really have that much of an impact towards the end of that match. Uh, was fine in the team fights. wasn't really a linchpin, I would say. But it's improved. It's improved slowly since game one, so maybe that improvement will continue. Yeah, and I, I, I am interested to see, you know, if Graves ever gets taken off the table, what he'll fall back on. But right now, yeah, three games in a row on the Graves, uh, improving over game number one, you know, like you said. But we'll see how he does in game number three. This time, though, proof of payment, he is going to be taking the Gragas, opting out of the Elise this time around. 734 going back on the Nami from game number one since the Lulu is banned out. And yeah, pretty much the same uh, bands as well. Let's touch on that a little bit. Bands, uh, pretty consistent. This time the Vlad not banned out, so we're not going to be seeing any uh, first picks uh, uh, First picks from the other side. I, I, who, who did? I, I don't even remember who UBC first picked now going on the other side. Uh, it was Lulu, um, actually. Lulu. Yeah, they uh, banned, yeah. banned Vlad and then first picked Lulu. And uh, this time around, being on the red side, they're not going to have that opportunity, so... Yeah, uh, they're not gonna going to worry about that. In fact, actually, Simon Fraser banned out the Lulu. But we do have an Ezreal and a Nautilus back on the rift <laughs> for three games in a row now. The only different champion is Gragas right now. I I really like the Nautilus and Ezreal picks though. Nomadic did a great job in game two on this Ezreal, as well as the fact that it keeps it away from Ozna, who's obviously very comfortable on it uh, from his game one performance. And the Nautilus pick denies that from CJ, who seems very comfortable on the champion, as well as getting priority tank for the top lane. Nautilus is pretty much undisputed the best tank you can grab in the top lane now. He certainly beats out a Maokai and things like that uh, in lane at the very least. And it seems to be giving some pause over to UBC. I'm interested to see where they go next. I like the change from Elise to Gragas as well, just touching on that really quick because the Elise in the end of game number two had almost no impact. In that final fight, of course, had no impact because he was caught out and murdered right away. But Elise just doesn't scale great into the end game. So if this game is going to go all the way like game two did, having the big tanky Gragas with a team fight disrupting ultimate, I think is going to be a really good thing for them. Yeah, and speaking of tanky Gragas, because we have that tanky jungle uh, now on the side of University of British Columbia, instead of the more offensive capable Elise, we have a more offensive capable in the top lane for CJ on that rumble. We're going to see how he does this time around, or th on this rumble. We're going to see how he does it on, on, in this game, as Gold Jet actually used him in game number one, and it wasn't quite as planned for him. Let's see if CJ can bring that one back. Osna going back on the Lucian, and I don't under, I, I don't. Uh, I don't, I, I don't see like that as a bad thing. That is great. Yeah, I think he did great on the Lucian. Just sort of uh, was able to could, uh, get to a point where uh, Gold Jet just got so tanky and he was just the only thing for him to shoot at at a, at a point during that last uh, that last half oh. of that uh, uh, game number two that uh, Hasna, he just couldn't do much on the Lucian at a point. But still a great pick. Had a great mid game. And we're going to see if he can take advantage of that one. Dimnus going to be on the Vladimir. We had saw him banned out last game. He wasn't picked game number one. But this time he is picked. And it's going to be on uh, Simon Fraser University. JL going on the Karma once again on that bot side. Rounding out the team for SFU. But in the uh, on the UBC, they go back on to the Jays. So going back on a couple comfort picks. But also bringing out a couple new things on UBC. Yeah, and I think UBC has a pretty decent draft this time not to underplay either team. Honestly, going into this, both teams have their strengths here. Um, I'm honestly surprised that Karma hasn't seen a little bit more priority from UBC, though. That's the one thing that's surprised me a little bit because JL is through and through a Karma player. This is by far his 
highest played champion, both in um, the UL Campus Series, the playoffs, and the regular season, as well as in solo queue. Even this guy just spams the hell out of karma. So I'm surprised we haven't seen 734 either take that away, or I mean, it, it probably isn't quite worthy of a ban, but 734, I'm sure, is competent on the pick. One way or another, though, that little aside to the side, we do have both teams fully locked in, and we've got the spectator delay to get through. Yeah, but before we get to that, uh, get to onto the rift, I do want to give a full shout out to our sponsors this time around and get over to the plug. So we'll go and start right now with Band Gaming, primary social app for the CSL. And we hope it's yours as well with chat functionality, with chat call functionality, uh, boards, calendars, creating groups. Um, it's really no, uh, really no disputing why it's our primary social app, and we think it should be yours too. Join the CSL community at band.us slash at CSTAR League, and also want to thank Twitch for uh, sticking with us throughout the entire collegiate season from PAX East to PAX West. Um, it's been great to work with Twitch, and uh, we'll give them a plug in just a moment with their Twitch community, uh, Twitch Collegiate community that they're starting as well. So thank you very much on that, Twitch. And of course, Azus. Um, one of the most powerful uh, gaming, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, uh, computer peripheral providers in the uh, market today. Couldn't get that out in a moment, but I will now. I uh, want to welcome them back to the 2016 and 2017 season for CSL. Uh, monitors, laptops, routers, graphics cards, motherboards, and more. Fantastic equipment. Go check them out. Also want to go ahead and uh, do some plugs here as well. We're hiring a social media manager, so if you're curious about how to get into esports or wanted to get your foot into esports, see a starleague.com. Go check that out for more information because we're a great place to start. Trust me on that. I love CSL, and uh, I think you will too if you try us out. So send us your resumes. Midwest Campus Clash is going on. $25,000 on the line with a final finale in, at Columbia College, Missouri on April 8th. You can type, uh, type exclamation point clash in the chat and get more information on the Midwest Campus Clash. And I told you I would give a little plug to Twitch as well. You can go follow them at Twitch Student on Twitter or uh, go check out www.twitch.tv slash communities slash collegiate for uh, uh, see what the world of collegiate on Twitch is all about. Uh, they're creating a community uh, for, uh, for viewers, for collegiate fans, and trying to just uh, broaden the awareness. It's great. Go check them out. I uh, really advise that one. And last but not least, we are doing a contest with Asus. Uh, how to enter, you can actually submit a video that showcases either A, your collegiate gaming club, or B, awesome gameplay footage from yourself or one of your club's best players. Email that video to admin at cstarly.com with a subject titled ROG Submission in all capital letters. Two words to make sure it's the actual video file and not just a, a YouTube link. And uh, you can have the chance to win uh, one of three ROG's GL502 laptops and, of course, ROG swag or, you know, $500 for your club. So it's definitely worth it. Try to get that in. And uh, we're going to be on the rift in just a moment. Spectator delay is counting down. Almost done. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest. I'm here with Octavian. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Game number three. It's tied up between San uh, <laughs> SFU, sorry, by the Simon Fraser University and University of British Columbia. You just heard it, so welcome to Summoner's Rift. Game number three, West Finals, Simon Fraser University versus UBC. Tied up, Octavian. It's getting exciting now. It's been exciting the whole time. I don't oh, know what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah. I have been highly excited. Okay, maybe game one wasn't too terribly exciting. It was a little bit of a rollover stomp for the side of uh, UBC. However, they got a rude awakening in game two. Went on to about 50 minutes, and they had trouble closing it out after 
a very well played early in mid game actually like they lost a lead in the early game and usually you don't call that well played but the the well played aspect of it is they didn't allow it to get to their heads they played well to their composition and they kept themselves in the game but as the minutes wore on their comp just couldn't stand up to a 50 minute composition from uh, SFU, as well as some really, really solid picks from Demnus. Yeah, they did fantastic, at least keeping their cool. And it, that's nothing taken away from UBC. They did fantastic as well, but it just got a little bit outscaled, a little bit outplayed during that in, and Proof of Payment got caught a couple times in the end as well, gave up some very important objectives. And that's where we are now, tied up. And we see Proof of Payment going on a, tank -er a tankier jungler this time around. Yeah, capable perhaps a little bit less of the uh, aggressive play that we saw both game one and two in the early game. Um, I'm interested to see where these junglers go, not only with their itemization, but also literally where they go in these first few minutes, because so much of these two matches has hinged on these players, particularly Proof of Payment, as he's going to be, of course, starting off with the Raptor camp, getting that early XP buff from starting there with all the little Raptors. And uh, then doing the three buff start, or the three camp start, pardon me, going the Raptors, Red Buff, Wolves. And after that really is where the jungle path is going to open up and where some options might start coming into play. Yeah, we see Frozen Knight heading up towards blue buff, Proof of Payment heading toward his his blue buff. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have opposite jungler, or, uh, opposite starting, uh, or ending points, I should say, junglers. See Frozen Knight try to gank that top lane, take advantage of CJ not having too much of an escape besides that flash. If anything, at least force that flash out of him and prompt him to come up once again later on. Proof of Payment is going to have a little bit of a harder time ganking that bot side as Nomadic. He's on Ezreal. He's very shifty, quite shifty in fact. Able to get out of harm's way quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And uh, CJ is going to be shut up to his tur turret, so Frozen Knight is not going to have an opportunity in the top lane right now. And um, it looks like neither jungler will get their pick of the ganks at the moment. Demna's going to keep this lane shoved up for a little bit, and this mid lane pick is an interesting one for sure. Vladimir is still in the meta to some degree, but I wouldn't say he's a top priority pick for a lot of laners. But Demnis so far has pulled a ban in this series on this champion and now is going to be playing it for us today. So I'm interested to see how his performance pans out as he's done a decent job of holding the lane for sure. But yeah, starting out with a dark seal too, by the way. It's a bit interesting for a Vladimir, I would say. It's, it's actually really um, quite powerful because he gets that plus 25% healing from potions effect. Oh! But there's a flash body slam. Oh, that was a nice flash body slam as oh, well. No. Is the red buff going to tick down? No, it's the last auto attack from 734 securing the first blood for University of British Columbia JL. Going down using both summoners in the process as well. So a big victory in the bot side for University of British Columbia. And that's so unfortunate for Ozna that um, his flash auto wasn't enough to finish the kill. But thankfully, at least the, the kill did still happen. And they're going to be able to shove a wave up onto the turret, deny a lot of farm cinematics. So even if the gold from the kill didn't go to Ozna, there's still going to be a gold discrepancy building between these two champions here. And um, actually, a pretty large, pretty large one as well if they can zone pneumatic away. And the way Proof of Payment ganked, hold on, oh, actually, he's going to be using Fro Frozen Knight in the jungle. And Frozen Knight used his dash to go into those uh, Raptors. But now, looks like we have a teleport from Gold Jet. He's going to force a flash out of KT Smurf. Nice dodge of Dreadline. Flash being used against, or uh, by Dimness as well as now CJ has made his way down. Kind of a cluster here on the red side drugs, or red side Raptors, I should say. But nobody dies. A lot of flashes being blown, though. Hyper Flame Spitter! And um, that was an incredibly aggressive play. That You don't often see a teleport completed after the person you're teleporting to try and save has to flash over the wall to escape because they've gotten so low. But Gold Jet, confident in his ability to take that fight. Strangely enough, no kills going down either way, as you say, no casualties at the end, but it does actually give priority to Proof of Payment to go for an invade. Um, he gets some deep vision, and he's going to start creeping ahead in terms of XP here. He's just about a level up now, so... Even if a kill didn't go down, that's still advantage UBC, even if only slightly. Yeah, and that's as well as that they didn't burn TP. Well, I was going to say, that's nice read, uh, reading from Proof of Payment. He knew Frozen Knight had to go back, knew, knew he doesn't have his flash to keep up with him as well either. 
Hold on, we have a gank in the top lane here. We might be able to just burst him down. Oh, CJ, no he's going to uh, just hang out here and try to retaliate. Gold Jet does not have the opportunity to actually kill here, but he goes back in, seeing that CJ pushed, uh, pushed up a little bit too far, went into the uh, danger zone, and ended up getting a kill over to Frozen Knight. So nice gank by him. Yeah, really unfortunate for CJ that he didn't have his flash available for that fight because he played that really, really well. Uh, almost actually managed the 2v1, and maybe with that summoner he could have done it. But still a kill going back over to Simon Fraser. Not, I think, that big of a deal. Um, the most important thing about that is that it's on this Graves, which Frozen Knight has had trouble scaling into the mid game on his Graves throughout the whole series. So getting a little bit of early gold might be good enough to help him out with that, and that could be really, really important. So far, so good the last time. Hold on, Proof of Payment going back into that bot lane, but an Arcane Shift and a Shield is going to keep Nomadic quite safe. But this turret is going down ever so slightly. Ozna dashing in, or I won't say dashing, you know, walking in, walking out, auto attacking every time he walks in, just poking down that turret ever so slightly. And now Frozen Knight, he's on the bot side as well. Not the healthiest of individuals, but able to at least ward off Proof of Payment. He can go away. Some, uh, really some of that pressure off of the Matic and JL. Interesting um, itemization choice by Ozna early on. He's gone for the Vampire Scepter. A lot of people will rush the Blade of King on this scene, so it's certainly got a good build path for him. His gold Chet pushes CJ back a bit. But it means he doesn't have nearly as much damage as he could if he had invested that gold into stacking long swords, perhaps. And as such, he's not going to do as good a job at pushing Nomadic out of this lane. Um, but it's just going to be a, a small discrepancy, and alongside Nami with a Vampire Scepter, he's never really going to be lacking sustain anymore. At least. No, not at all. But look at Proof of Payment. He's making his way down to the bot side here once again. Now it looks so like much Dimness. focus on taking this turret. Though. Yeah, they're very determined. Dimness is making his way down as well, though, and he is level seven. He has Hemo Plague available. No, very nice scouting. They're not going to be able to get the flank onto UBC. Dimness is going to clear that pink ward, though. He gets himself something down there. 30 gold. A little bit of experience as well. That's in the consolation prize, I suppose, for nothing if you uh, don't pick up anything. But for payment. He's focusing a lot on this bot side, really trying to make something happen. Yeah, just trying to get a lot of early damage, a lot of early priority on that first outer turret. Throughout the series, we've seen that sort of um, emphasis by UBC. They've taken first brick in every single game so far. Um, so it definitely is something that's on their minds. And with the Lucian pick into the Ezreal, it's, it's a lane that's going to be pretty easy for them to keep shoving up. So it makes sense. 734 having a little bit of a squabble with Frozen Knight over this ward. Just going to be resulting in both teams taking out each other's wards. So, denying vision in that pixel brush and into the mid lane from the bot side. Not too much happening in the top lane right now. CJ is staying very safe underneath this turret. Has the haunting guys. So, able to uh, dish out a little bit of damage anytime he's in the face of Gold Jet. But Gold Jet is staying quite healthy right now. Does have that shield to help withstand the uh, flame spitter as well. Gold is a little bit, or I should say CS actually, in favor of University of British Columbia on the bot side and the mid side, but it's not too, not too telling at the moment. It's not out of control. Anytime we did see a shock blast land in the mid lane on the Dimness, but every time he uh, does get hit with a shock blast, Vladimir, he can just heal that right back up. Yeah, transfusion plus the extra healing that he's getting from the Dark Seal as well. Super powerful for his early laning, and he's um, really tough for Smart to keep him down. He has got a little bit more now in his toolbox to do that, though. He's got the healing reduction itemized, which would be rather nice. Um, one thing I want to hit on, though, from an earlier point is that Proof of Payment has lost that level lead that he had earlier on, as well as lost a CS lead, partially due to his focus on the bottom lane and just sort of being a third laner down there at, at, at times. So. Frozen Knight has come back from that sort of loss of tempo earlier on in that in that very strange fight near the Raptor pit. And now 10 minutes into the match, we are perfectly even on pretty much all the numbers we could look at. And uh, Proof of Payment is going for an invade. Yeah, there's the tidal wave coming out. Flash over the wall for Frozen Knight. That's the second time he's had a flash over the wall to save his life. So, it's the job done. But that just means that he's 
He's, uh, he's not getting pressured in between the intervals of his flash, so he's nicely played by Frozen Knight. He takes advantage of that one, but now he's once again down a flash. Now, same, uh, SFU, Simon Fraser, they have vision on the dragon right now. If UBC wants to start it, they will be privy to it. So they need to be careful around that. I think they know that, uh, UBC know that they have vision around it as well. And that dragon is why we're seeing UBC trying to make some really aggressive plays on the bottom side, continuing here to try and make. Oh, maybe a little bit of contention here, but KT Smurf is just going to join over. Oh, there's a flash by Dimness trying to pick up a huge amount of damage. The collateral damage missing no. payment oh. as well, but the Hemo Plague is enough to pick up the UBC jungler. Very nice aggression coming out from Dimness, and it paid off. And that was so close to not killing him. Hemo Plague. I, it may have killed him through the ebb and flow from 734. Honestly, I couldn't tell if it was the animation that was a little too slow, so the healing actually didn't reach the Gragas, or if the Hemoplague pop killed him even through the Nami healing. One way or another, though, on a knife's edge, that kill. But Demnus getting some more gold for himself, as well as a few stacks in the Dark Seal. Very nice for him. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what you want. But hold on, look at that Executioner's Call. It's going to help him take down Din uh, Dimness quite a bit and deny him any sort of uh, recuperation with that transfusion and Dimness has to completely get out of that lane back all the way up and just go back yeah he does have two stacks he actually has the uh, uh, Seeker's Arm Guard already built up he's going to finish up well, actually he didn't even finish up he just outright bought his Lucidity Boots so he's going to be able to throw out those transfusions even more because he also has a Kindle Gem now as well so really stacking that cooldown reduction Right. All right. Well, Gragas is alive again, and so UBC are once again positioning aggressively around this dragon, looking for deep vision. Seven three four landing that ward near the enemy raptor camp, and I apologize if you can hear the roaring thunder of the gods behind me. Apparently, Houston, Texas is being assaulted by the forces of nature at the moment. There was a big storm passing through the area, but the cast must go on as. Um, so does the vision battle on the bottom side around this dragon. And this is another one of the reasons why perhaps we see such emphasis on shoving this bottom lane from Simon, uh, pardon me, from UBC. If they can get priority on the bottom side, they can translate that into dragons. They can start to get an early lead. And the only sort of real hitch in their uh, plan right now, the only thorn in their side is Demnus's Vladimir, who's been able to keep this lane shoved up pretty much permanently. Now he's doing a very good job on the Vladimir, seeing why he was, uh... You know, forced a ban out in game number two. I was excited to see him play this Vladimir, see what the hype was with that ban. But hold on, Frozen Knight is trying up his uh, Mountain Drake. So it looks like he's going to try to go for his steal here. Can he pick that one up? No, collateral damage not going to be enough to pick that one up. The first Drake of the game goes over to University of British Columbia, that being the Mountain Drake. And they will take that advantage and just try to translate that into the mid game. As they start focusing more onto objectives. But very nice pickup by them. And uh, here we are back at square one, back at the uh, Bolt Team's just farming. Speaking of the mid game, though, we are getting some pretty powerful mid game spikes coming out here. For both teams, actually. The Man Immune completed for Ezreal, but that's matched by Blade of the Ruin King. And Smurf has hit what I think is probably the biggest one. Whoa, we've got action in the bottom line to Matt nearly going down. Trying to trade out with Ozna, but you cannot do that with a Lucian, especially one with a Blade of the Ruin King already. Thank you for the visual aid, Ozna. Yeah. Backing up exactly the point I was making. Yeah, very much so. So, exhaust used by JL and a heal used by Nomadic. So, very nice advantage in the bot side for UBC. Yeah, summoners down. Still, though, it's a Karma Ezreal lane, so it's going to be slippery to catch on to. But an advantage is an advantage, even if it's one you can't capitalize on easily. And meanwhile, on the top side of the map, we're seeing uh, OBC vying now for vision control near the enemy blue buff. On. Frozen Knight, he's coming out this. through the backside. There's no wave there for him, and he thinks better of that one and just backs off, trying to get a uh, sneaky gank on in the uh, on the tri Gemless, rush. though, is coming down. Yeah. Let me try this one even more. There are four members on the bot side. There's a, an exhaust going down onto Frozen Knight. Ozna, Good oh, bubble. oh, nice bubble by 734. Evil Plague did go down. It's not going to kill anybody, but it does leave some pressure. I'm just gonna, uh, SFU are just going to wait for this minion wave and may take the first turret of the game here. This is 
Gonna be a little while waiting on that wave though. They do have the damage to take this down for sure, but they may lose a turret in the mid lane. Gonna swap back over there, see how low that's gotten. Oh, yeah, this is gonna go down. Get it. Oh, we we see. see. They get the first turret gold, and now looks like they are going to be fighting Gold Jet as well. There's a flash on <laughs> Gold Jet. Dimness, he's going to come up and back up his partner here. No Hemo Plague, but KT Smurf's health bar still going to back off on that one. And uh, yeah, turret going down for turret, but UBC, yeah. they get the first turret. And there's a flash, my god, Dimness is so aggressive. Equalizer being thrown down in the mid lane. Trying to get onto Dimness. And Sanguine pool going in onto 734. Can he pick up the kill? No, CJ able to finish off Vladimir before he's able to eat himself some fish for dinner. Gold Jet, remember, he does not have a flash here. He may be in trouble. He has no turret to run to. Jail's there, though. He has a shield. He's going to root down proof of payment as well. And now Frozen Knight is in the vicinity. Getting a huge amount of damage, enough for JL to pick up that kill. Pro uh, proof of payment going down in the end there, getting retaliation for Demnis going down. So kill for kill, turret for turret. Looks like both teams are just really answering each other back on almost all occasions. Yeah, it's a really scrappy game here. I feel a little bad for Demnis with that series of events though. He roams down to the bottom lane, gets bubbled before he can get into a fight. He comes back to the mid lane, gets tossed away by a Gragas ulti. The man cannot make his way into a fight. Finally, in the end, though, doesn't really take down 734, but gets CC chained before he can finish the kill. And in the end, it is that very even trade. It's one for one in turrets, one for one in kills, and the gold remains even. The next fight, I imagine, will break out around the next outer turret, likely to go down, maybe down to the bottom lane, where we've seen all this perpetual shoving from UBC. That turret has to fall sometime. Eventually... It looks like Nomadic may be going back. That actually might leave the opportunity for Ozner to shove up this very quickly. Though so we do see Gold Jet making his way down there to try to protect that turret. Meanwhile, CJ pushing up the top lane turret. Gonna go word out. Possibly word out. Maybe just rec uh, go over to the Krugs and pick those up. We do see buffs being given over, taken by various champions here. Smurf taking up the blue buff. Frozen Knight taking up his respective red buff as well. CJ picking up the Krug, so both teams just trying to get as much gold off the map as possible and get in an advantageous position with the buffs and just uh, go back at it again. Right now, it's back to farming and uh, building up defenses and walls. I think what I want to see in the next team fight though is more of a presence from CJ in particular. We haven't really seen a big team fight yet, so I can forgive it to some degree, but this, this rumble hasn't seen much use out of the Equalizer yet. And uh, that is so incredibly key for a rumble pick in the mid game. You've got to find a good team fight where you can drop an equalizer and get a three, four man um, ulti off. So it's going to be really, really big if we see CJ do that. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, a little too close for comfort for uh, KT Smurf, but he does get out nonetheless. Lands that shock glass onto Demness, but Demness is still he's just going to heal that back up. It's so hard to poke out Demness on a Vladimir. Even if you do have Executioner's Call, it's not so much to really go through. You have to almost just completely burst him down at this point. Now that he has uh, quite a bit of damage in his arsenal. We do see teams once again going back to farming. Dragon is going to be up into 26, uh, 26 seconds. I'm going to say 27 or 26 seconds. And now CJ putting some pressure in on that bot side, taking out the, t the bot lane turret. And uh, that puts you to see just a little bit ahead in gold. And it's, again, this is kind of uh, kind of turning into game number two all over again with how even it is. Yeah. Um, and honestly, if it continues that way, then this game could go to either team. Game number two really only going to Simon Fraser by the skin of their teeth. So this is a tense series to be sure. One outer turret remaining for Simon Fraser, And the thing that... Um, British Columbia have throughout the whole series been very good at though is early turret control. They've had a turret lead in the first 20 minutes in every single match so far. So good to see them consistent at that. But they have lost their footing to some degree. It, it looks like a very different team than game one where they were incredibly confident in all of their plays. Now just kind of searching around for the right pick. Definitely more cautious. They still look good. It's just not the dominating team that they were in game number one. And that could be up to, you know, uh, SFU's decision. 
they've been playing a lot better. Frozen Knight has only gotten better every game with this grade. 1-0-2 now. He's, uh, he's doing very well. And uh, we question, uh, I mean, question game number two, why he would go back on the graves. We definitely question game number three. Hold on, there's a calling coming out. It's only going to drive Nomadic back. It's not going to kill him. But we did question uh, Frozen Knight's uh, pick, num uh, pick on graves in game number three, but he just seems to be getting more and more comfortable finding his stride and finding what he needs to do. And it's uh, it's paying off so far, but... Unfortunately, that doesn't get you turrets. What does get you turrets is Ozna and 734, and they're on UBC's team. That's going to be the third turret of the game, or, uh, of, or for UBC, fourth turret of the game overall, but third for UBC. They lead 3-1 to one right now in turrets, and that's going to prompt SFU, Simon Fraser to pick up the Cloud Drake. Yep. Um, I wouldn't say quite an equivalent uh, pick up for them. I wouldn't either. These no. turrets, these turrets are such a big deal, actually, because if you look at the gold values, the only reason why UBC are still in this game is the turrets. Take away three turrets worth of global gold as well as first brick gold, and they're probably like three k gold back. So that emphasis on taking early turrets, on having lanes that push early on, is really, really big for the game plan. For um, for UBC, and if Simon Fraser realized that going into game number four, really regardless of win or loss in this match, they may even be able to draft even further around that and potentially prevent it. Because that seems to be the, the final sticking point for them in this early game. They've solved the laning phase, they've solved the, the jungle issues that they had in game one, and now they just need to solve the fact that they're constantly losing turrets early. I mean, they only have a little bit more opportunity to really solve that situation. But we do see them evolving, getting better throughout the series. You have to wonder how that's going to play out if they can bring this to the last game, uh, game number five. You know, that's saying if UBC actually wins this one, we still don't know. It's still quite up in the air. But it was nice seeing a, uh, a team evolve and, and, and adapt to what how they were playing. Not only oh yeah, not, not only how they were playing, but how the enemy was playing. And uh, some Fraser University, they're showing that very well here. Very impressed with them, able to stand up to the former two-time world champions. If I keep saying that, they're going to make a drinking game out of this. <laughs> but it's still very um, much true, no matter what. Yeah, and th there's some truth to anything that could be made into a drinking game. I think that's another old adage somewhere. Um, one way or another, though, I do like UBC's composition better this game going into the end game. So if we see a repeat performance of game two, and for the sake of my throat, please don't make it a 50 minute game. But if we do see that, um, then I like even just the Gragas a lot more than I like the Anise. I like having the tank in the jungle and then this carry top laner as well. CJ, if he gets a good equalizer off, it can change the pace of the whole game. Still haven't seen that yet. 25 minutes in, haven't, I think, seen a single Rumble ulti. Actually. Yeah. But it's there. It's possible. And uh, that is more than can be said for game two. So UBC, I think, are in a slightly better position this game. But they are also losing slightly more in the early game than they have been in either of the two matches. Yeah, and, and, and losing mostly in the way that they're just not rocketing themselves because, you know, this is... Such a close game. Hold on. Dimness may be getting caught out here. Or is Proof of Payment catching himself out here? He gets locked down. Has to go over the wall. But Dimness oh, no. on his way to following him as well. Explosive cast did miss. Frozen Knight able to pick up 734 on the other side. Dimness finally finishes off Proof of Payment. Simon Fraser University have a great team fight right here. They get two kills off of uh, UBC. Let's see what they get out of that. Yeah. Uh Looking at that fight, looking at this game even, you wouldn't be able to tell me accurately which team was first seed because it really does look like Simon Fraser first seed coming into this game now. And Simon Fraser know how to upset a, a bracket. They did that with their last, uh, with their last round of uh, yeah, UCI. Yeah, four, was it game? Yeah, against UCI. I forget exactly when that was, but was they finals. managed to bring, they managed to take down University of um, California Irvine, and now they're up against University of. Um, Dang it, British Columbia. And they're doing a great job of playing upset in both of these series. I really don't know where game one came from if this is the Simon Fraser that that is on the field tonight, because game one is just, it does not jive with anything that I'm seeing in this match. 
possibly just use that as a warm-up round because we haven't seen too much different, uh, 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 I guess, deviation, is what I was trying to look for, uh, deviation from their game one strategy. Dimness, though, he is caught out here. I don't think he's going to survive this one. He's going to single and pull toward Ozna, get quite a bit of damage onto him. There's the zombies with the calling coming out. Proof of Payment picks up that one in the end. That was a nice catch by UBC. We're going to see what they can do with that because I don't think there's really too much they can catch out here after that. If they're very brave, they could try a Baron. They're they have, have to be, be very brave. Really, yeah. really brave. Vladimir is a big deal in a, in a Baron fight for sure because Baron does shred your magic resistance and Demnis is strong right now. But Frozen Knight's a big deal too. Oh, Frozen Knight getting caught out. And there's the Equalizer I think you were looking for. Completely cutting off. Oh! oh! Beautiful! Gold Jet but it doesn't trying, matter because he's Nautilus. That was awesome. <laughs> Gold Jet trying to use that explosive flower, but man, it was <laughs> being brought back in with the explosive cast. But now, proof of payment and company, that's the whole UBC team actually, they're going to go in on this Baron with Frozen Knight dead. Dimness just now came up. This Baron is going down so fast. Yeah, there's, yeah, proof of payment. He smites that one out successfully, picking up the Baron. That goes over to UBC, gives them the gold advantage. And now they're going to chase down JL. They're going to chase down Gold Jet as well. Gold Jet with that shield may survive here. Super Mega Flame Rocket, whatever he, Galaxy Rumble calls those things. He's eventually going to pick up the kill with his Flame Spitter as well. Very nice pickup and play by University of British Columbia. And CJ, he kept us waiting. He kept us waiting 26 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but he delivered. By God, he delivered. That was a beautifully played Rumble team fight. Not just the equalizer, which was well placed to catch out the enemy jungler, but also just really accurate Electro Harpoons at the end. Good flame spitter usage. All around a great Rumble team fight. And you know, it's it better late than never, for sure. UBC are not going to give up the ghost this game. They get a Baron, a secondary turret, and a series of favorable skirmishes. And it looks like they may go over to the Cloud Drake as well, even up the Cloud Drakes, which, you know, it, I mean, it is one of the least important dragons in the very beginning, but when the stack goes up, you can rotate so fast, they're going to deny Simon Fraser University from having that opportunity. They take that one for themselves. Now they add that to their Mountain Drake. They're going to go back, spin their spoils, which they have quite a bit of. We see CJ. Grabbing, uh, already Never having that Leandre's, fin uh, Leandre's finished along with that Zanya's and now adds a complete Void Staff to his arsenal as well. So really just going to penetrate with that Flame Spitter and Equalizer. Very, very powerful CJ's becoming. And right at the right time too. Now we're going to see all these explosive team fights break out. We've already had a handful of them and I'm happy about it. I'm excited. Um, yeah, UBC have a composition. I, I I said it before, they've got a much better composition than they did game two for this kind of situation. Ooh. So they've adapted as well. Oh. This is a death brush. Death brush, death brush. Oh, they got oh, spotted. They're spotted out in the dredge line. Misses tidal wave used defensively, but Simon Fraser University, opportunity spoiled by those damned flowers. Yeah. Curse you, Flora. <laughs> Curse you. I mean, it's essentially it. Those things weren't in there last season, and now <laughs> one new addition just completely ruins Death Brushes. Well, only some, and only if the support is suspecting them, so props to 734 for checking that for his team. And uh, this will get uh, another turret down for UBC, who have been in the turret lead the whole time. So, priority still there. I, f I feel like if going into the next game, SFU just somehow fix their turret game up a little bit. They are on very even footing here with UBC, which is quite a compliment because these guys are seed number one for a reason. Yeah, this at UBC, they're amazing players, and I'm really shocked to see that game over two little way. But again, UBC, they weren't completely out that entire game. There's a reason why it went 50 minutes. Oh, sure. And, and they're uh, still not this game. Oh, of course. No, no, no. Not by a long shot. But, I mean, it is uh, starting to get a little hazy for SFU, but again, we saw that last game too, and we saw that one turned out, so we'll see if SFU can just play that patient game that they did so well in game number two. And uh, yeah, they into a late game as well. They've got a great composition as well that scales. They've got the double AD carry again. Nomadic and Frozen Knight still in the same champions. Demnus is not on the same that he can get picks with, though. Oh, Frozen Knight, he may be able to make, may go down here. He actually 
kicks out. The thing goes back in. Nomadic, he's going to go down as well as 7 3 4, though. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Nomadic actually picked up that kill. Sorry, CJ. Yeah, CJ, he's going to be able to answer back here with a double kill. And that is Dimness down. UBC, that is a 1 for 2 all, all around in favor of UBC, but the health bars. Not in the best shape for UBC. They're gonna have to back off of this one. Recuperate. I don't know if everything, I don't know if everything is fair and above board for UBC here because it is very obvious that CJ is listening to me <laughs> because I criticized his rumble play in the first 20 minutes of this game, and now in the last 10 he has just been absolutely massive. The guy went from 0 and 1 to 5 and 1 in the space of 10 minutes, and. It's not just a fluke either. He's had really, really great rumble play in all of these skirmishes. That fight actually looked rough for UBC. You were you were starting to uh, swing in favor of Simon Fraser with your yeah. play-by-play -play there, but then CJ turned it back around and uh, has kept his team in this game for sure. So props to that guy. And over the course of the series, we've just seen players stepping up and it's not been the same one each time. Demnis in game two did a great job. Nomadic as well. But before that in game one, Osna was popping off and so was Proof of Payment. And now here we have CJ stepping to the forefront. It just shows we're here at the finals and everybody can pull their weight. Yeah, exactly, and that's the that's the just the, the play that's coming out here right now. I mean, you see CJ, uh, you were talking about, I mean, yeah, he's, he uh, had a little bit of a rough laning phase, uh, yeah, even just a hint of a post laning phase. We didn't see those see too many of those equalizers land properly, but you know, just like that, like, I thought I thought Simon Fraser University would win that team fight. They poured so much into Frozen Knight, wasn't able to kill him, but. CJ, a nicely placed equalizer, able to turn everything around, and that's just the power of a good rumble. And uh, despite how his early game went with those equalizers, he's on great, uh, great footing with them now. Great placement. So all that's erased because uh, now when he lands those, it's going to be a huge, huge turn for UBC. Yeah, and uh, you know, in League of Legends, it's the ends that justify the means. So. You can go the first 18, 20 minutes of the game without casting your ulti once, even if so long as you win in the end. That's what that's what really matters. So he was just denying the like, uh, uh, denying SFU the uh, knowledge of letting him know how he places them. That's the uh, obvious, <laughs> obvious boy it was here. The really long game. I'm actually really one way or good another though. I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I think we're making. Too many jokes at this, uh, this Rumble's expense for the early game because he really didn't have any great opportunities to. And that's something of a failing on the part of all of you, DC, who... Ooh, hold on, speaking of opportunity... Oh, man. Speaking of opportunity... They may have gotten one. Yeah, Dimness, Dimness, he was almost caught out. He had to blow his, uh, his uh, hey, ghost, actually, to get out of harm's way. Saw the entirety of UBC rushing toward him. You don't want that. The reason why UBC is hanging around here is because Baron is almost up. 11 seconds, it will be up. Gold Jet getting a little cut out here. The calling barely tickles him there. JL, they all get blasted away along with Nomadic with that explosive cast. Dimness is nowhere near this fight. But it looks like UBC yeah. is going to back off. Let's see what objective they pick up now. Main reason why they tried to pick that fight so damn hard is because Dimness was nowhere near it. Because Vladimir is such a crucial part of the team fight for Simon Fraser. Uh, they're gonna get try and get priority in this lane, cut them off before they can get to the secondary turret. At the very least, get some damage on this turret. But they are in danger of getting flanked on here. JL takes a big hit. Yeah, and then they need to shock. Well, only Vladimir can really sustain himself. Uh, of course, Nomadic, he does have a Blade of the Ruin King, but I mean, you land that on JL without a shield, he's not gonna be. No, he's, he's not gonna be uh, healing himself back up. Not too much here, so shock blast huge, especially laying out with support. UBC they have started the Baron. Yep. Oh, so it's kind of slightly risky, but it's going down very quickly. Who's going to be able to pick it up? That's UBC picking up the Baron once again. Second Baron of the game. There's the Equalizer being thrown down. That one not so great. He's actually just trying to stop the Gold Jet, but almost didn't Good matter. Enough. Dimness and JL both going down. Frozen Knight trying to pick up a kill with collateral damage on the proof of payment. Not going to happen. That is a 2 for 0 in favor of UBC, who also have the Baron. And their team fight is proving too powerful. That was a little bit of a scary Baron, because that really was just the proof of payment and potentially Frozen Knight in the pit, but Frozen Knight didn't make it there in time. So, Proof was easily able to smite that one away, and now it's a shove onto the top lane inhibitor turret. 
As Graves is soloing out the dragon at the moment. That's another air drake though. It's really not a big deal. Yeah, especially when you can't leave your base. Movement speed almost does not matter. As UBC, they take out the top lane inhibitor. Turn along with the top lane inhibitor. No contention whatsoever. Frozen Knight's not even helping defend this. He's actually on the bot side trying to keep the minions from pushing in. Because they know, he, they know that that's where UBC will be targeting next. The last inner turret of Simon Fraser. It's almost exposed. Now they have a little bit more of a of a time delay there for the minions to reach the turret. And Rumble completing the death cap means that CJ is going to continue to hurt in these fights. Uh, especially considering that Gold Jet has not really prioritized a ton of MR outside of his uh, single resistance item actually gone pretty heavily in terms of armor um, because they've got this double AD threat, triple um, well, no, pardon me, just double AD threat in the form of the Jason Lucian. Um, and actually, that's one of the aspects of the composition for UBC that I haven't hit on before, and which is really quite powerful. They've got such really solidly varied damage with the Rumble Top and Gragas Jungle, and then uh, an AD mid laner to sort of compensate in that regard, that it's going to be really difficult. For Demnus and Gold Jet, the two sort of semi tanks to itemize against that, though, to be fair, Demnus is going full damage, Vladimir. And none of that, none of that off tank nonsense that we saw a few seasons ago. No, no, no. And thank goodness, too, because that was not thank very goodness. fun. No, not by any means. When you went, when people went tank a collie, because that's how good tank items were. Tank Karma. Oh, man. Well, tank Karma, I can understand. Tank she a has, she's Don't got try utility. To justify it. I'm not Maybe. justifying it's a. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it makes more sense than tank Akali. Akali doesn't have any utility. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. All there's right. no yeah. reason to build her tank unless tank items are actually just busted. Which they were, so there you go. They were. And now proof of payment, just absorbing the, uh, ta the uh, or tanking up the shots from this turret right now. They just bulldozer that one right down. And that is the last inner turret for SFU, and it is looking very grim for them as the second Baron buff is on UBC still and they empower the minions right at the inhibitor while the super minions push into the top side and we've seen this dance plenty of times from both teams where they just siege and siege and siege and wait for the super minions to push through and power through and make a distraction. Simon Fraser survived this once but it was against a very different composition there was no Rumble the last time around, and also importantly, no Gragas. The uh, Elise certainly not able to contribute as much to team fights as a Gragas will be able to through a payment. So, it's going to be really difficult to find those miraculous series of two or three fights that SFU had in game two. Because now the Death Push maybe started off by uh, the other side. No, not this one. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they still have some wards out in the jungle, but that was about the last one for SFU, besides right next to their barrier. And a uh, wall gate. Right Probably call those. It's not an acceleration gate, because that's what Chase has, but either way, let's call it a barrier. A wall, a door, maybe? Base gate? Hey, there you go. It's a base gate, not an acceleration gate. This is a. Uh, this is why you're the yeah, We're breaking right ground here. We're <laughs> yeah. breaking ground on this But uh, yeah, it, it, oh, it's man, so... a Guardian Angel. Yeah, a yeah, Guardian Angel. Oh, man, it's going to be so tough for SFU in these team fights now. Usually Proof of Payment has that, you know, get out of jail free card where you can just dive in with his body slam now and just on his Guardian Angel to heal himself back up. And they may just be waiting for another Baron at this moment. They're going to shove what they can as they push in the bot lane, t or the, the mid lane, I'm sorry. Just pressure every lane as much as possible right now. They're clearing vision around the Baron area, around the top side of SFU. And that's all just got to control this map and control the objectives. We've got Elder Drake and Baron both going to be with us in just under two minutes here. So they can take their time. They can wait for these global objectives to come up and then grab those and slowly close this game out. Of course, there's got to be that little um, just itching wary in the back of their minds that there's going to be a repeat of game number two, which was a pretty big disaster for them, but they're still in a good position nonetheless. And as I've mentioned a few times, they've, they've covered over a few of the weaknesses that caused their fall off in the late game of 
the second match. Looks like we're having some more connectivity issues uh, for one of the players here, so hopefully we'll be back into the game very shortly. It was resolved quickly last time, but it gives us a bit of time to catch our breath and, uh, you know, think about this game and think about the series going forwards, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a lot riding on the line. Of course, uh, the regional finals are, are you know, where... Uh, where the prizes are actually given out. I don't know if anyone's been keeping up with the postseason uh, postseason articles or uh, banter or anything like that. But the regional finals, that's where the money is at for the teams. Postseason, it will be strictly bragging rights. Um, so there's a lot on the line at the moment for both these teams. Team number one, of course. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the winners, the actual uh, winners of the finals, getting $8,000 apiece for their team. And only $4,000 for the second place. And I say only. That's not too shabby whatsoever. But, of course, you know, you always want to double yeah, your I mean, money. That's the object of life and especially of competitive gaming. That's what we got here. And I'll take I'll take $4,000. It's only $4,000 to you. Thank I'll you. take $8,000. Okay. There you I'd, go. No, I'd be okay with that. I don't know who's giving us the money, but sure. That's fine by me. CSL ain't giving me $4,000. Oh. <laughs> Ah, they might. Oh. Who knows? I might work more for them. Uh, you know, really grind out the next few hours and just really just. I mean, Duran's gonna call me. He's like, bro. Yeah, we're doing a great like, job. No, th yeah, thank you. You are too, dude. How's your voice? I know. Uh, like, I know we're supposed to be talking about the game, but how's your is your voice holding up? <laughs> all right. I'm just fine. Yeah. For is anyone it? who doesn't know, Octavian is a little bit under the weather, and this uh, the storm in Texas is not helping him out. Yeah, I'm literally under the weather in a, in a <laughs> few different senses of the phrase, but. We should be getting back into the game very shortly. I'm keeping an eye on the yeah. player chat, and it looks like they are um, going to be back very quickly, just another minute or less. Yeah, and we probably should oh. talk about items because uh, oh. Gold Jet, they he actually has a Guardian Angels as well, so acting as that massive front line, and he too has that get it out of jail free card that I was mentioning that proof of payment has with, uh, with that Guardian Angels. So that's going to help him out. We saw both of those. Uh, well, we saw a few Guardian Angels last game really come into play, and the more this game goes on, I was gonna say, I mean, I was thinking maybe, you know, SFU, they had a chance to come back, but it's looking even more grim as the time goes on, because UBC have control of everything on the map at the moment. And I think Simon Fraser, I've mentioned this a few times, they need to solve the problem of towers falling early. They almost did. They almost managed to get first brick this game. And really not everything rides on first brick, but that seems to be the one consistent thing between all three of these very disparate games. We've seen very different performances from all from both of these teams in every match this series. But the one thing that's remained consistent is that British Columbia always take more turrets more quickly. So if somehow we see Simon Fraser crack the code and and solve that problem and prevent their turrets from going down or just take turrets more quickly than the opposition can, they'll be on an even footing going into the mid game. A really, truly even footing. They will have equal opportunity to get map control, equal goal, presumably. And that is something I don't think we've seen so far. What we have seen so far is Simon Fraser in game number two stall out a game uh, that they were probably gonna lose until the point where they could win which is exactly what they're doing right now. But like you said earlier, a lot different of a team that UBC is bringing to the table right now with this split damage composition that's really you're making making UBC, or no, I'm sorry, SFU, have to have to really make a decision on what they build, how they build, and what they, what they prioritize. So it's really a conundrum for them right now that's been kind of stumping uh, Simon Fraser University. But... As I say that, both the Baron and the Elder Drake are up now. Well, Baron's going to be up in four, four seconds, but those objectives are on the table. This payment, he gets chunked out. He's going to be brought back in. He has to body slam out. He cannot afford to be chunked out that heavily without any sort of retaliation, even with the at the moment. But now, CJ's caught out, but look at that equalizer. It's actually not going to catch too many people, but he says Zanias is going to keep him alive. Nice explosive cast spreading out SFU. Hard to tell who's going to win here. Proof of payment. He goes down very, actually very low, but not Whoa. dead yet. Osna <laughs> not, doesn't want to flash into harm's way too, uh, too quickly there. Gold Jet, his Guardian Angel is down. Proof of payment holds on to his as an advantage to them. But overall, that skirmish, nobody dies. And importantly, very recently, the top lane inhibitor had respawns. There wasn't free pressure for UBC there, so... That very even fight is actually very even. 
Um, let's just take a look at some of the resources burned. There's both summoners off of Ozna because of his highly aggressive play towards the end. And actually, Nomadic has still held on to his as well as Jail. So another fight breaks out around this Elder Drake or Baron. Keep an eye on these AD carries because it's going to be difficult for Ozna to keep himself safe should the fight break out. There's a knight getting chunked, but there's nothing really to keep throwing his way. And one of these teams has to make a move to one of these objectives Never. soon. Yeah, very much so. And, uh, and the objectives is where UBC really thrive at because look at their team comp. They seem to have Equalizer and um, I mean, easy shock blast to land. A tornado, uh, not tornado, I'm sorry. A tidal wave, very easy to land as well. Just divide everyone up uh, with the explosive cast thrown out for proof of payment. I believe you can get a lot better team fight in these narrow alleys, especially with CJ. But Smurf, he may be getting caught out here. Two shot barrage goes down onto him as Gold Jet pulls him in with the dredge line. Okay, D Smurf had his flash. He's just going to flash out into safety. And once again, we are back where both teams are just at a stalemate and facing each other and not one of them are wanting to budge. This time though, Simon Frazier seem to be rushing towards the top of the map. They've got minion weight priority up there. They might be able to snag a turret off the back of all this chaos, which could be nice for them, as well as some deep vision around that Baron pit. Oh, they didn't actually clean up the vision on the Baron pit itself right now, so the fact that they're out of vision in the enemy team hasn't really gained them that much. And... It's just waiting on another hook to land, waiting on another body slam flash maybe once that's back up for proof of payment. Or just a team to bite the bullet and start a Baron or an Elder Drake. It's so hard to tell who's actually going to pull any trigger right now. Both guns are loaded with extremely deadly ammunition. For sure. Yeah, and one of the teams, they have to pull the trigger, but they also have to aim it properly too. In this case, you have to factor in both of those and where it's aimed at and... Never. Pulling that trigger, and right now... They've got a little bit of priority on this Baron. Yeah, you they're there just four or five seconds earlier. That might be enough to... Nope, they're backing away. Never that, was, uh, that was just one of those rounds Reality being Bemi? shot off onto the, onto the Baron by UBC. The but they have more loaded into that gun that they have pointed. Focus. That SFU is they're trying to make something happen, but this might be a nice rotation from SFU. They could probably uh, hit down this turret very quickly, but no, it's not enough, actually. Proof of Payment trying to block off and uh, or uh, keep Frozen Knight away from this team. Nice calling coming out. Meanwhile, they're lost on the bottom oh, side. Big shock blast on the pneumatic. So he needs to be even more careful to get The wave is pushing in favor of... Bad Sunday case Ray. of deja vu here. Yeah, this is... <laughs> uh, UBC are again about four I, seconds closer to the Baron I, than the said, enemy if team. If FSU can pull this one out, I'm just going to be so surprised. They, they are just they're, they're the kings that just stalling these, these games out. And now they're almost at an advantageous position here. Equalizer goes down, goes down, not really hitting too much. Frozen Knight late to the party, but now in their proof of payment, using explosive cast to knock everyone back. And both teams oh got no one won. Baron starts up again. Now yeah, they're starting it up again. Looks like actually Gold Jet, he has teleport, but he may be going back here. I don't think he'll have the inhibitor turret. The inhibitor goes turret goes down. And now the Baron does go down in favor of UBC. They have the Baron. Frozen Knight, he goes down. Gold Jet uses his teleport. He's in the mix here, but it looks like he, Oh, there's a flash and the body slam by proof of payment. Gold Jet, he's knocked up with the bubble. Can they bring him down? Finally, he does go down. Ozna picking up that kill. Nomadic, he's on the run. JL, she's on the run as well. And that is, that is actually two for zero. UBC, they have the Baron, but they lost two turrets, one of them being an inhibitor turret. They have to be played this carefully now. The next, no, pardon me, the inhibitor oh my God, went, the down. Inhibitor went down. These are not super minions. This is not a ZZ Rod buff lane. There's no banner of command. This is just regular old minions. Super minions and now. there was so much bickering around that Baron. That they were able to shove two turrets and an inhibitor. Dude, that's more than I would anticipate out of a Trindamir split push. <laughs> yeah, wait. Just maybe... And like two or three. Also, two Rumble took that Baron, by the way. Yeah, I saw Just that. Just casting yeah. our minds back. That wasn't a jungler. That was a top laner. Seems to be a trend this yeah, which game. Yeah, you, you Elder Drake was earlier too. But, but now UBC they have Baron and the Elder Drake. Even with their inhibitor down to the bot side, this has got to be the most advantageous position they have. In the, they could have in the late game right now. They need to force something here. 
At least that's, that's, that's one man's opinion, because, man, SFU. What is there left to force, though? No, the SFU, they can... How do you can... take Elder Dragon and Varen <laughs> and not be in a position to push? Not be in a position to, to force a fight, because there's no Elder Dragon or Baron anymore to force a fight around. Simon Fraser can continue to turtle, because they've got that free pressure bottom lane. The best thing here for for UBC to do, and they seem to recognize it, is to shove in the bottom lane to counteract the super minion pressure. Use this Elder Drake Baron combo and just go for some crazy, crazy dive. But it's gonna be super, super dangerous. It will be dangerous, but I have to think it might be their last resort. We haven't really seen UBC get uh, super desperate. When we saw SFU get desperate with a couple Baron attempts on last game, we haven't quite seen how UBC, and I'm curious to see if maybe we'll see a desperation, uh, just a desperation dive coming out pretty soon, but they're playing it cool. Equalizer is up right now for CJ. Actually, all ultimates are up, except for the calling. It was just used to shove in turret, uh, this turret even more. Guardian Angels back up for Gold Jet. And the, the solution for a lot of teams here, for a lot of compositions, would be to send the top laner to the top side with that open inhibitor, get a shove going, and then teleport in if a fight happens. But Rumble is so crucial in these fights, and these fights have been so instantaneous and explosive that it's really dangerous to split CJ off from the rest of the team. That's almost inviting a 4v4 team fight or a 4v5 team fight if Nautilus doesn't go to match the Rumble, because that wave is shoved up really far already. It would take a long time for Rumble to get it to the inhib. So, again, UBC are caught in a, between a rock and a hard place in the end game. And this time they, they have Baron and Elder Drake and they still can't do it. Oh man, SFU is like that Yu-Gi-Oh card, card catapult turtle. <laughs> We've seen them. Uh, are they? Ex please. I will. Me. Big Yu-Gi-Oh fan here. Let me explain. Catapult Turtle. Obviously, they are turtling very, very well. Now, uh -huh. uh, I'm not going to go by anime the Catapult Turtle, Hyper but the card Barry. actually get to launch one of your. Uh, this is actually a relevant part of it, but regardless, Catapult Turtle is a turtle with a launcher on its back, and that's essentially what SFU has done two games in a row. But hold on, we may finally have an engage coming out here. That was. That was the uh, tidal wave coming out along with the equalizer. I don't think the equalizer really hit anybody here, but there is gold jet going down. At least is no, that was just guardian angels going down. And turret all falls. Oh, the turret still following. It's the favor, minions. Uh, yeah, two turret minions in favor player. of Simon Fraser. They cannot repeat this mistake one more time. There's no equalizer. They're, they're There's no right. cast. I mean, maybe they haven't repeated it to the extent that an inhibitor is going down, it's but there's to. like five waves up there. Yeah, they're about to. They have to get something here. They've committed now. Yeah. Jet does but they've got have... no Nami or Rumble ulti. They can't force another fight. They, they, have they, to they need up. to back away. Oh my god. SFU. They're not going to let them, though. Simon Fraser University, yeah, they, are, they have the, been the best turtling team I've ever seen. I swear Dude, it's anything holy. Is, oh my god. Like game wave control? has been so solid. You don't just get those five stacked minion waves shoving like that by accident. That happens purposefully. And it's been so useful for them. There's an inhibitor turret going down. Okay, Lucian and, and Gragas managed to base, but not in time. <laughs> and now they're gonna pick a lopsided team fight. CJ flash onto CJ, and he is going to try to dish out as much damage as he can, but CJ is caught here. This is Simon Fraser's opportunity. There's the Equalizer going down, but it's not going to do anything. Shut down, going over to Frozen Knight. This is exactly what SFU needed. And there's a 68 de second death timer on CJ now. That is a huge, huge disadvantage. And now they're shoving with super minions, you know, thanks to that inhibitor going down to a minion wave. Just want to read that that happened in this game. But this is really, really good late game control from Simon Fraser. And they just seem to need to get to the 50 minute mark and then the game is theirs. This is this is two times in a row now. Yeah. We're starting to trend here. This is no longer a fluke. Oh my god, I told you they're the best turtling team I've ever seen. They have come back from the oh, Nexus turrets. Oh yeah, Nexus turrets they're going down. They can take this Nexus down so fast. Close of Night has so much damage behind him. And there's one Nexus turret going down. UBC, they have to engage here. I mean, they're inside the UBC base right now. They've backed them out. Oh, no. Top inhibitor is still up right now. They're going to try to catch somebody out, but they can't quite do it. CJ is still down, by the way. That seemed like an eternity ago. Nomadic. Kid mid lane. 
Minions! Mid lane, oh my god, the minions are minions. still pushing in favor of SFU. The I mean, it's not as bad these things to their Nexus. But, there's an equalizer, okay. Oh, teleport coming out. Oh, CJ, he's on the opposite side, teleporting to a, a ward on the opposite side. But now he goes down once again. 734, is he gonna go down? That was a Hemoplague being used. And this is once again Simon Fraser's fight! At UBC, they're on the run. CJ, he's been down now. He threw out the equalizer, but that's about all he could do. Proof of payment throws out the explosive cash just to try to divide everybody. Flanking accelerated gate shots, uh, uh, shock blast, I should say, coming out from Smurf on the side. Osna trying, to do, going down. Osna trying to do what he can. There's Gold Jet going down. This is going to, oh my god, I don't know how this fight's going to go down. There's Sanguine Pool coming out from Dimness, and he takes out Osna. But not before uh, KT Smurf was able. Actually, there's KT Smurf. Don't ignore that frame, uh, that, that sentence structure there. It doesn't matter. KT Smurf goes down. 7-3-4. Proof of payment. The only one left alive right now. Frozen Knight, Nomadic, and JL alive. And that's exactly what you need to take out an inhibitor and possibly a Nexus turret. My God. This is the only game of League of Legends I have ever seen. I've been doing this crap for three years now. Now, that's just casting, playing as well. This is the only game of League of Legends I have ever seen where three inhibitor turrets go down to minions and nothing else. Nothing else hit these inhibitor turrets. They all went down to just minions. The wave control from Simon Fraser is so incredibly strong and a lot of it is down to UBC just continually picking fights every time there's an opportunity to fight. They picked that fight. They've never taken the safe route. They've never taken the the high road, the low road, whichever one it is, the road that takes them back to their base so they can defend their goddamn inhibitor turrets. And they've paid the ultimate price. I, uh, yeah, this, I'm, oh, I mean, I'm not speechless, obviously I have things to cast, but uh, call here, so, you know, casters are never speechless in my opinion, but, man, what does UBC do? I mean, they've, they've been in this position twice, SFU have been in this position, position twice, and SFU have one of the best late games I've ever seen, and they just don't really? make a yes. mistake. Uh, when you were talking about high road, low road, I don't even know if it's about that, it's just they don't make a mistake, they don't get cocky, they don't get overzealous. Uh, they take one win and they keep it and they just go on to the next one and they well, deny UBC uh, the opportunity to uh, pick up another win, a retaliation win. We see so much in collegiate games where teams are overzealous, they overstay, they over overdo something, they don't have moderation. SFU, Simon Fraser University, they've got moderation and they are practicing it to the fullest right now. Reality now they bending. can't even do the Baron. Super minions are in the base, they have one Nexus turret left. And this is going to be a Baron started by Simon Fraser University. They're not facing to deal with the minions. They're not facing to deal with the minions. Again. Uh, there's, there's the equalizer. I mean, going I mean down. at this point, the point is moved. Yeah, they pretty much lose this game. If they have, yeah, I mean, the Nexus turret, it's going down. The SFU, they're, they go, I think they're trying to pick up. There's the, there's the Nexus turret going down. CJ, he threw down his equalizer. He went back. And now they're just waiting this out. They're letting CJ pick up the turret. Who's going to pick up the Baron though? And it is going to be Simon Fraser University. They may they're not they don't have any way over that wall. So that means UBC, they have an opportunity to go back, but now they don't have any Nexus turrets. It can literally be backdoored now. This is by minions, GD. by the way. I mean, this is how, how it's been working. Yeah, and another turret in the base goes down to minions. And this is a glaring hole in UBC's defenses. They have consistently four times out of four now. There's a fight that they can either take and lose some lose um, momentum on their turrets, lose turrets to minions, and potentially win, or they can base and deal with the minions. And every time they choose to take the fight, and every time it's ended up poorly for them. They're trying, to, trying it again here. Osna, he picks up the red buff. I don't even know how much this is worth anymore. It's just a red buff at, at 57 minutes. Hold on, proof of payment. He's trying so hard to get in position. He doesn't have explosive cask yet. He doesn't have flash either. If anything, he's just showing his big belly to try to get everyone backed up here. Elder Drake is a uh, uh, elder dragon. It's not a Drake. Drakes are babies. This is the elder dragon is up now. And once again, there's minions on the inhibitor. Oh my God, there they are. Every time there's a fight being picked, yeah. like, 
I don't even have to say it anymore. Yes, I you just assume if UBC is fighting, there's minions on one of their structures. Right. Every After time. a certain point, it's not coincidence. It is strategy. Simon Fraser University, they have the winning strategy here. KT Smurf, he goes down. And this is on the Nexus turret. Simon Fraser University, they just won game number three at 58 minutes. I don't know what to say about that. They are, ama besides that they're amazing at turtling, they can pull a game out of any time as long as it's after 40 minutes. And now we go on to a game number four with Simon Fraser University up 2-1 against the defending you Collegiate League of Legends champions. What the hell? <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, we're gonna get into that one um, almost immediately. Um, gonna get a quick shout out to our sponsors, uh, Band Gaming, Twitch.tv, Azus. Thank you for sponsoring this hell of a game right now, a hell of a series, best of five, going into a game number four. My name is Joshua Fekes Quest here with Octavian. It's kind of a, it's gonna be a long night. Glad you guys are with us. Stick around for a little bit longer. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 